Please arise if you will and turn to page 5 of the booklet. We will do the prayer of preparation together. Son of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. Even unto the God of my joy and gladness. Give sentence with me, O God, and defend my cause against the ungodly people, O deliver me from the deceitful and wicked man. For thou art the God of my strength. Why hast thou put me from thee? And why go I so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? May invite the congregation also to join and please in your response. O send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me and bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy dwelling. And that I may go unto the altar of God, even unto the God of my joy and gladness. And that all the heart will I give thanks unto thee, O God, my God. Why art thou so heavy, O my soul? And why art thou so disquieted within me? O put thy trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, which is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. Even unto the God of my joy and gladness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who hath made heaven and earth. Let's pray the second part together. I confess to Almighty God, to the Blessed Mary the Virgin, to the Blessed Michael the Archangel, to Blessed John the Baptist, to the Holy Apostles of the Lord. To all, all the saints, saints and the Trinity, Father, that I sin the city in thought, word, and deed, through my fault, through my, my fault, through my, my own foolish fault. Therefore, I make this one sinner and virgin. Blessed Michael the Archangel, blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostle Peter, and all, all the saints and the Father, to pray for me, the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, grant us pardon and absolution and remission of all our sins. Amen. Will thou not turn again and quicken us, O God? That thy people may rejoice in thee. Show us thy mercy, O Lord. And grant us thy salvation. Lord, hear my prayer. And let thy cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Crying unto thee, O Lord, in the time of their misery and trouble, and thou didst hear them from that holy heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for it becometh well the just to be thankful. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. They cried unto thee, O Lord, in the time of their misery and trouble, and thou didst hear them from thy holy Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus.
Jesus Christ, saying, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. We are going to pray the ninefold Kyrie. The first three to God the Father, the second three to God the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the third one to the Holy Spirit. Let us remember our sins and ask the Lord's forgiveness. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us arise and pray the Gloria. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace and will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that thou takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art holy.
Alleluia, Alleluia. O Lord, the very heavens shall praise thy wondrous works, and thy truth in the congregation of the saints. Hallelujah. Have I been so long time without you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen my Father also. Hallelujah.
A few questions, huh? Who is Jesus for you? Who is Jesus for you? If Jesus were to ask you, who am I for you? What would you tell? If Jesus was to stand in front of you. He is our three letter word. Starts with G. Yeah, yeah. How about you? Our God. The answer is He's my Lord and Savior. He's your Lord and Savior. In our moments of difficulties, troubles, struggles, who do we hang on to? We hang on to the Lord. Jesus says today, if you ask anything in my Father's name, He will grant it to you. Now, if you ask the Father anything in my name, He will grant it to you. So, that's what you see. Oftentimes, you say, we make our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not just a formula that we are carrying on. No, we ask in Jesus' name. And Jesus also said, when two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm in their midst. Jesus is here in our midst. And especially in the Mass. I know you guys are tired after a long day of school, right? How boring that might have been. How you know, dragging on that might have been. And perhaps not being interesting. Today, we are coming to celebrate Jesus. Jesus spoke to us two ways. One, he spoke to us in his word. And we heard it being announced, the word of God. You too, I forgot to ask you too. Who is Jesus for you? God. God. Yes, he is our God. Who do we run to in our times of difficulties, challenges, when we are, when we are confused? In the first reading, St. James, whose feast we are celebrating. Now, you know why we are read? Because it's cool to be read? <laughs> no. This is what the church did for 2,000 years. This red, today, it's symbolic. You know, it's a very red too. You know that? We match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2000, for 2,000 years, this red signifies the blood that these people shed for Jesus. Because they believed Jesus is God, they were put to death. Because they proclaimed Jesus is my Lord and my Savior, they were put to death. So today, we are celebrating the feast of two apostles who were put together, James and Philip. Interestingly enough, James gives us what do we do when we are you know, shaken up, in moments of uncertainties. He says, very beautifully, For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If you are going to be two-minded all the time, okay, I am a follower of Christ, but at the same time I can do this, I can do sinful deeds. No, we are being double-minded. Okay? Or they speak of double personality, dual personality. We do something up out in the front, and there is some secret part of us which we think others are not seeing. But God does definitely know. Jesus, who is God, He knows who we are. He knows us through and through. He knows us how each one of us is feeling tonight and sitting in this presence. We have come for a mass to listen to his word and to be strengthened by his body and blood. These two apostles preached Christ across the globe and as a result they were put to death and that's why today this is red, meaning that they shed their blood because they love the Lord. If you had a chance, would you do that for Jesus? Time is coming when all Christians will be asked to really prove today. We are living in a society where People are telling, sin is fun, carry on, no problem. Oh, it's okay to kill a baby, that's all right. You know, after all, tomorrow they, we, uh, we heard in the news that they are going to introduce uh, uh, a plan B pill. Now, that according to me is killing off babies. Or not only that, but any young teenager that has been encouraged to that, it's not, it's abominable. God has given us beautiful bodies for men, for women, all right? And this body is to bring life into the world. And that's why you and I were born. All of us, all of us were born that way. So if God has given us that, how beautifully we got to cherish it. And therefore, we need to cherish life so that we may also die a death defending the faith. It is important for us to know that Jesus is our way. 
Jesus is our truth. Jesus is our life. Jesus wants us to be happy. Jesus wants us to be happy whichever level we are. And if you are in a grade school still, you know, you are called to be happy. If you are in a junior high, you are called to be happy. If you are a senior in the high school, you are called to be happy. If you are uh, working, you are called to be happy. If you are dad, mom, your brother, sister, your grandpa, grandma, every one of us is being called to be happy because Jesus is our way. Jesus is our truth. Jesus is our life. There's nothing else. Although, today people may teach you, no, no, no. Jesus is one of the coolest guys that ever lived on earth. He's like a Buddha, you know, he was a good teacher, the enlightened one, or he was like, I don't know, no. people begin to put Jesus up on struggle on the same level as everybody. No. Tomorrow is the feast of St. Athanasius. When St. Athanasius, he was a bishop, right, of Alexandria. And when he was a bishop, for 45 years he was a bishop, only 10 years of his life was a peaceful one. Otherwise he was exiled out of his own country five times. And ultimately he was put to death. What was his crime? Because he defended Jesus' deity, that Jesus is the Son of God. There was another uh, person by name Arius who was going around and spreading, no, no, Jesus is only a man. He was a nice person prophet, he was a nice teacher, he was only man, today we proclaim in the Nicene Creed that he is truly God and truly man. So Arius defended, uh, Arius pro proclaimed that Jesus is only a man, but Athanasius, the bishop said, no, he is also God, he is truly God and truly man, and that's why we are able to say it today. You know that formula that we read, Nicene Creed, Creed is what we believe, okay? And the creed very clearly says, I believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth. No, no, the Bible or somebody else is, uh, is teaching against the Bible these days. No, oh, it came from evolution and so on. Yeah, right, okay. If that's what God's word says, otherwise, that God created us in the womb of our mother's womb, he knit us together. He created this whole heaven and earth. He's God the Father. And Jesus is God the Son. He, how did he, he was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified. He died and he was buried in the ground. But on the third day, he became victorious. He came back to life. Nobody was walked this earth or who has ever lived. Died and came back to life on the third day. Nobody. Jesus is the only one. Even that they are trying to disprove. No, no, no. We have found the bones of Jesus, which means, hey, he never rose. You know, then we found the ashwa, the little box that contains the bones of Jesus. See how the world is teaching? Why is the world teaching this? It's because it is not in favor of God. It is in favor of the father of lies, who is Satan. And he is very clear. He wants to trick everybody all the time, constantly, according to each of our own capacities. Satan is very active. And so, today, there are so many religions, there are so many things that are being told, which are not true. And Jesus himself says, I am. So many times say, who are you? I'm so-and-so, I'm so-and-so. Yeah, that's a very beautiful thing. But when God says, I am, in the Old Testament, everything thundered. There was thunder, lightning. When God spoke, everybody was frightened because he's God. He's powerful. He's able to do anything with our life. But he will do us only good. As long as we seek him and ask him, that good be done for us. He's God, our loving Father. And Jesus is our Savior, the way, the truth, and the life. And there is a third person in moments of difficulty, as we said, St. James was telling us, we need to be strong, not be double-minded. Who can give you the certainty and surety for you? When you are confused, when you don't know what to do, to do this or that, the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit. He is the divine counselor. These days we are preparing ourselves for the Feast of Pentecost, when God's Spirit was poured out on the apostles. And it is that power of the Holy Spirit that gave these two apostles of whom we are remembering today and whose peace will be celebrating tomorrow. It is the power of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, that gave them the strength to go and proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And they were put to that for Imagine. They are asked, so who is God for you? He told me beautifully, Jesus is God. Isn't it? Do you pray to him every day? Do you ask him? Do you 
you say to you tonight, I'm very tired because of my long day at school, it's too difficult for me, or this work is too difficult for me, do we talk to him? Or is he only here? He's be here too. He needs me in our life too. God should be in one whom we breathe. We need to live in him, breathe in him, and have our life in him. That's why, when do, how do we find joy in our life? Our joy we will find and it will be complete only when we seek God's holy will. What is God's holy will for us? That each of us need to find, Lord, what do you want me to do with my life? What am I supposed to do right now? I'm a student, okay? I'm supposed to excel? Yes. And can I be your soldier, Lord? Yes, you can. Can I bear witness to your holy name, Lord? Yes, you can. God will give you the strength. And that's why it's very important. Any service that we do here, anyway, whether you read, whether you participate, everything we do it for the glory of God. It is important that we answer in Jesus' name. Whatever we are doing. That's when God will become personal for you. That's when God will become real for you. Because he is like somebody who we see, you know, face to face. Unless we touch face with them, we can't. But even though we don't think of him, he thinks of us. So God is not far away. He's only a part away. Right? If you think of him, he's there for you. So how many times do we think of him? Not when you curse. No. Not when we curse. Not when we take the name of the Lord or God in vain. No. Truly, as his children, as his son, as his daughter, when we approach God and ask of him, when we approach him in our prayer, do we really think of him, mention his name, and we are part of him and he is part of us? That's what our faith is. This is the faith for which they died. And Jesus is going to come back again a second time. Okay? He, we are left in a period, an uh, interim period. Okay. In the year 2000, we thought everything was going to be over, right? Everything will be wiped out. The world is going to end. Um, then, then last year was the Mayan calendar. Everybody said, well, December 23rd, boom. Oh, so when it's going to, the world is going to end, they said. So I was in Casper, Wyoming. I met a young man. He said, that's not fair. The world is going to end on December 21st. No, Lord, that's not fair. Very good. He heard your prayers and he extended some more time for us, right? <laughs> See, God hears our prayers. See, however we may be trying to calculate and say, according to our human calculation, this is when the world is going to end. 